Hello. It's a good evening, morning. It's it's been a while since I did uh, one a.m. late night worship. We're gonna read from the book of Jonah. The reason is because um, during this week at Camp of the Woods, we've had um, we've, our seminar speaker, Dr. Howard, has been speaking about. Um, Bible people you wish you'd met. And the one for today, Friday, is the Ninevites and and uh, how God redeemed an entire group of people, a uh, group of Gentiles too. So, so we're going to find out exactly what's going on here. Jonah. Jonah flees from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness had come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own god, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your god. Maybe he will take notice of us, and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them, and they asked what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because well, he already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, What should we do for you? What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it's my fault that this great storm had come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O oh Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But... The Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2. Jonah's Prayer From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. That's a bit of Psalm 34 there. From the depths of the grave I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I've been banished from your sight, yet I'll look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Okay, pause there real quick. I usually think of the VeggieTales version of Jonah, where... Where, like, the whale came up and swallowed him while he was, like, still floating, like, at the top of the water. But here, it says Jonah, like, Jonah himself says, I reached the bottom of this deep, dark sea, and seaweed was wrapped around my head. And if we take that as not a metaphorical thing, like, he was basically near death, like, he was drowning. And so the fish was actually there to save his life. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. 
When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I vowed I'll make good, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I like how it actually uses the word vomited. Chapter 3, Noah goes to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on the sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the kings and his nobles, king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. So, pause right there. It's cool because the king of Nineveh used his position to change, like, he changed the moral climate for those who were under him. So, yeah, like, like he was a leader who, ex who accepted the change and who not only accepted it, but also said, hey, we are implementing this right now. Chapter 4, Jonah's anger at the Lord's compassion. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That's why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you're a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Oh, now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. The Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and wanted to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine, and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die, and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you have any right to be angry about that vine? I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. So dramatic. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine. But he did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? And that's the end. So one cool thing there I just noticed now it doesn't say in chapter 1 why Jonah ran away from the Lord. It just says that God said, hey, um, go to Nineveh and preach against it. And then Jonah runs away. And we're like, when I was younger, I used to think that was because he was scared of Nineveh. Like, he's like, oh, I don't want to, uh, like, like, those are scary people and they'll kill me or something. But no, it actually says here in chapter 4, Noah finally reveals, kind of like in a movie where the character reveals 
why, like kind of in a plot twist, he reveals why they did something at the beginning. And it makes you like reframe everything you thought about that person. Jonah says, like, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. Because I knew that you're gracious and compassionate. You're slow to anger, abounding in love, and you relent from sending calamity. So he wanted Nineveh to be destroyed. And like ever since the very beginning, he wanted Nineveh to be destroyed. But he's like, no, God, even though you said preach against it, I know what the, what you didn't say. The part two is so that they will repent and I will turn away from punishing them. I think that's awesome. I honestly think that is really cool. That Because people keep on saying that the God of the Old Testament is so different from the God of the New Testament and doesn't have the grace and doesn't have the forgiveness and isn't as loving as the God of the New Testament. No, it's this is the same God. He's exactly the same. And like David and Jonah knew very clearly that God is gracious and loving and and that that's what he's known for. So let's see, is there anything else? <laughs> if there is, I probably forgot it. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed reading the book of Jonah with me. I hope you read it on your own sometime. Uh yeah. Y'all have a good night. I'll catch you on is today Thursday? Yeah. Okay, we'll catch you on Tuesday for next week. Bye. Ba -ba -ba -ba.